My name is Matthew Johnson, and I am the pastor here at Glencoe United Methodist Church. And welcome to a Sunday morning worship service here at Glencoe virtually. We are not meeting in person due to the pandemic and the rise in cases, and we want to keep everyone safe here at the church. So we're allowing everyone to worship at home rather than here, so that way we can maintain safety and lower the spread, hopefully, at least in this community. Friends, as we gather during these holidays, they are a time of joy, laughter, and a lot of love, but we must remember to be safe. So please do be safe during these holidays. Be safe with your loved ones, but still try to have the best time as possible because this is a time where we gather together like no other. Now, just before we get started, I only have a few announcements. Don't forget, every day of the week, including Sundays, we are dropping an Advent devotional at 5 p.m. on YouTube, our website, and it's showing up in our social medias. If you would like to join in on that and be challenged and hopefully prepare yourselves for the advent of Jesus Christ, then let's join together, watch the videos, and listen to God speak to us. We read scripture and there's always an activity for you to do every single day to help you be ready for the coming of Jesus and his birth. Friends, this is an opportunity for us to grow closer to God so that way when we celebrate Christmas, it can be a more joyful time and be more meaningful. Give us more hope, give us more peace, Give us more joy and give us more love. It'll help us grow more faithfully with God in our walk. And it will help us grow together as a community of believers. In addition, the Incarnation Bible Study has also began. And we are doing that every Wednesday from 6.30 to 8.00 via Zoom. If you do want to get in, we're only got two more weeks of it, but if you do want to get in and just join us for the next two weeks, please contact me. My email is in the description below and I will be glad to send you the link so you can join us and then hopefully learn more about Jesus and the titles that Jesus has taken on as the incarnation of God in the world. And don't forget, friends, that if you use Amazon, try to use Amazon Smile and choose us as your charity for any purchases you make, that 0.5% that goes to, per to the charity of your choice. This is the time of year where we make more purchases because of the holidays, and this does help the church at no extra cost to you. It is a way that we can give back to this church during these difficult times while we're already making these purchases anyway. So I would like to encourage you to go ahead and go to Amazon and set that up if you've not done so, the Amazon Smile account. If you have, please be sure to make sure you use that every time. On the app, on your phones, it should have a, a way to set it up to where every time you use it, it can go as an Amazon Smile purchase and therefore give money to your charity. But if you're going on the computer or online, you have to go to smile.amazon.com. So please do that and help the church out during this time. With all of that, friends, let us now go to God in prayer as we open our worship together. Will you pray with me? Oh God, you call to us from wild places. You call to us from the inner chambers of our hearts. We come in answer to your call. We come to pray, to praise, to learn of your love for all creation. Reveal your glory that we may see it together. Inform and inspire us to seek your kingdom on earth in our time. Amen. Our lists are long, even in the strange mess where we live these days. And we want to do it right. We want to be safe but we want to be able to enjoy the season. We've got work to do to put right where has gone wrong, to heal what is broken, to mend the relationships, 
and to prepare for the company that will come. The prophet Isaiah reminded us that there is work to be done. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. When God comes in, then healing is to be found. But we need to make the way. We need to open the door into our lives. So we light these candles as a sign of our faith that the God we worship is not far from us and that we can clear the way for that God to come and dwell with us. We light these candles in faith that company is coming. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 11 from the New Revised Standard Version. Comfort, O comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, and that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flowers fade, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift in your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up. Do not fear, says the cities of Judah. Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, I know it is a difficult time and it is the time of the year where we spend a lot more money typically on presents, on food, and all of these other things. 
to celebrate the season. But we must not forget to give back to the church, to give back to God. There are different ways that you can give back to God in this time and give back to the church. One way is that you can get some food, non-perishable items, and bring them to the church. So that way we can give these to the Reedsville Outreach Center to those who need it most during these cold times. Another way, friends, you can write a letter or a loving note to someone you know, a note of thanks, a note of blessing, a note of hope, just a note of love. This is, doesn't have to be anything crazy or fancy, but this is a way of showing God's love in the world because sometimes what people need most is just to know that somebody is thinking and praying and caring about them. But then, of course, friends, maybe consider donating to the church. You can send it in the mail to us. You can bring it by here and I will lock it up securely. Or you can go online and pay on our website virtually. Regardless of what you do, friends, it is now that you need to give back to God because it is now that we are in preparation for Christmas. It is now that we need to be preparing for the company that's coming, the one who is going to come for our salvation. We celebrate Christmas because we know that Jesus, our Savior, was born. Now, let us act like Easter people. Yes, I know I said it. Easter people here at Christmas because we did not come to this place. We do not go and celebrate anywhere Christmas for just the birth, but it is what the birth represents, which is the Savior come into the world, God incarnate, who will live a life filled with his loving and healing ministry and teaching us how to live and how to be more faithful to the Lord our God. Friends, please give back to God in one of these three, if not all three ways, so that way you can continue to give back to the God that is giving you all of the blessings in your life. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, the precious one who give us the Savior of humanity, we beg of you in this time to be with us and to give us strength and give us hope. And as we give you back what you have already given to us, may we be blessed by it. And may you bless the gifts that we give back to you for your ministry, for your transformative power and love in this world. Help us to transform the darkness into light. Help us to bring hope to the hopeless. Help us to bring peace to the anxious. Help us to bring joy to the depressed. Help us to bring love to the hate. Lord, we ask all these things through your Son, Christ Jesus. Amen. Scripture lesson today, 1 Mark, verses 1 through 8, the New Revised Standard Version. The proclamation of John the Baptist in the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locust and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? 
Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of the hearts and lives that are listening to this this day be touched by you. May we all hear you speak to us and feel your Holy Spirit grasping us, guiding us into straighter paths. Amen. Friends, today marks the beginning of the second week of Advent, and we are getting ever so much closer to Christmas. We're just inching right along, if so to speak. And today, we're going to continue on this theme of company is coming. And of course, when we talk about company, we're talking about the Lord. We're talking about God is coming. And so today, we're, our passages of Scripture comes from Isaiah and the beginning of Mark. And both of them are very wonderful passages for Advent because they both express the emphasis and importance of making way for God. Before we get to Mark, let's go ahead and jump back to Isaiah. In Isaiah 40, we are seeing a people who are, who are in exile. These people who have went through so much and they've dealt with so much pain and loss and now you hear the prophet Isaiah telling them, be comforted, be comforted, because God is coming. God is going to fulfill the promise, bring you back home. And with this, they are brought this idea of comfort in their lives. They need to be comforted in the wilderness. They need to see this hope that we talked about last week. But instead of just hope, they're getting something more because in order to have this hope, in order to see this promise fulfilled, in order to hear God speaking, there has to be faith. Through their faithfulness, God will help them. Because remember, it is their lack of faithfulness. It is their disobedience. It is their mistreatment of the poor, the needy, those who are on the margins that led them into exile to begin with because it was a punishment for their disobedience from God. God used Babylon as the agent for the actual divine punishment. But then you have God saying God never left fully and God will come back and reading the scripture here. He will feed his flock like a shepherd and he will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Friends, when we read this passage alongside of Mark in the season of Advent, we are given this notion of comfort and hope. We're given this idea of things are going to get better as long as we're obedient, as long as we are trying to remain faithful, as long as we are trying our hardest for God. But then we go to Mark, and then Mark is also kind of working in that same, same mindset, right? Because at the beginning, it talks about the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's what Mark is about. But then it jumps straight over to John the Baptist. It leaves Jesus to the side for a few minutes and then just talks about John the Baptist and how he and his ministry led people in the right direction. But it, it wasn't just about John. He was actually trying to tell his followers about the one who is to come, Jesus. He says right here towards the end, he proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me, and I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is a beautiful revelation, right? Because now this person who was such an influence to all these lives, just baptizing people and changing their hearts, he was saying, I am nothing compared to the one who is coming. I am nothing compared to the one who will come and baptize you with the Holy Spirit. 
And the Holy Spirit was always, always something that we can rely on in Christian faith because the Spirit was given to us by Jesus. Jesus actually says, I am going to leave you with the Spirit, an advocate, if you will. And then, but here, let's go back to this and focus on this because this is important. And this gets back to our theme for the week of companies coming. He quotes towards the beginning here, the prophet Isaiah saying, see, I am sending a messenger ahead of you. What John the Baptist was referencing just a moment ago towards the end of this passage, who will come and prepare your way. We're talking about preparation for company coming, right? We did that last week. We talked about it. Well, we're going to continue talking about it this week. The voice of the one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord to, and make his path straight. In other words, don't be trying to put things in the way. Make way. Here comes the one that we have been waiting for. The one that we need in our lives. The one that we are hoping to see finally. Think of it as the headliner, if you will. Think of it this way. John the Baptist was the opening act, and now Jesus is going to be the headliner. Isn't that awesome to think about? That just sounds so cool. But think of it this way. Before the headliners can get on the stage, things have to be set up in the right way. Between the opening act and the headliners, there has to be a changing of the guard. There has to be a switch. The place has to be prepared. And the place is somewhat prepared when the opening acts come in, right? So when your openers come in, the place is already somewhat set up. But it is after the openers actually get done that the main event or the headliners can come out and their stage is set. Let's think about it as company coming. When we have company coming, we usually have a mess. We recognize the house is a mess. We recognize it is just trash. We recognize that it is not kept up, things like that. Now, some houses are an exception to the rules, of course, but most homes are not kept up to the point where company can come anytime and you're completely ready for them. Most need something done. Well, we all need to just jump in and be a part of the cleanup crew. We need to jump in and be a part of the, the solution to this. We recognize there's a mess. We recognize there's a problem. Now we need to fix it. We need to be taking initiative to do that, right? Well, here's the thing. In Isaiah and here, it references paths being made straight. It talks about this idea of the paths in the wilderness need to be made straight. We live in this mess of a world that we can argue is a wilderness, right? It's full of turmoil. It's full of chaos. It's full of famine and all of this sinfulness. And we need to fix that as preparation, making way for Jesus, making way for God. And I think that what we need to do here is we need to just stop and take a moment and sit down and think about what to do. It requires us to know who's coming and what we need to do in order to be fully prepared for them to come. For example, if my mother-in-law is coming over to the house, my wife and I know that certain things want to be done before she gets there, so that way the place looks nice and kept up. If my brother comes there, I'm going to do not quite as much work because I recognize that his standards are a little bit different. Not saying that they're low or anything, but he's not going to care if he sees a little bit of toothpaste on the sink, the, in the bowl of the sink, right? There are certain individuals that you would make things cleaner or do different types of cleaning than others. You know what I mean? So when we prepare the way for Jesus, we need to make sure we're preparing in an appropriate manner. Are we setting our hearts and making them align with God? 
Are we thinking properly in this season about what it's about, not what it, we want it to be about? Are we taking the initiative to help those who are having trouble this season, whether they're struggling because of finances, whether they're struggling because of food scarcity, whether they're struggling because they've lost loved ones, whether they're struggling because of their mental illness, whether they're struggling because they're alone, whether they're struggling for whatever the reason, are we there for them because we are the body of Christ in the world, therefore we should be for those in the margins. Are we preparing the way as we should? Or are we trying to do the minimal amount to make it acceptable and move on? I, I want to argue that there's no such thing as acceptable when it comes to Jesus. If we don't provide ourselves to Jesus, then we are not doing what we are called to do. Jesus gave his whole self to us and his body and spirit. And that is literal. His body died for us. And his spirit dwells among us still. So he gave all of himself to us. Why is it that we cannot give all of ourselves to him? When we prepare the way, when we make paths straight, we are clearing obstacles from that path. Think of it this way. In North Carolina, we like to boast about our roads, correct? We like to think about how our roads are nice and kept up. They're not terrible like certain states that you go through and you can't get through miles and miles and miles of road without breaking an axle, it feels like. Here in North Carolina, we, we, we like to emphasize our infrastructure as good. Well, what about the infrastructure that we need to have for God to get here, for God to come and visit? Company is coming, right? We need to make sure that the roads are cleaned. We need to make sure the roads are smooth. We need to make sure the roads are open. We need to make sure that we have got everything ready for God to come whenever God is ready. We don't need to put obstacles in the road, cones to mark out lanes on the highway. We don't need to put potholes. We don't want to make sure we want to make sure that there are lines on the road. We don't want to half do it because think of it this way. Would you like to drive on a road that is half complete? There are some roads before they're completed where people are having to take a break where they have not got the lines of the road, but you still have to drive on it. How hard is it to go up that road at night? It's hard sometimes to see, especially if there's nobody else on the road. I know that life gets difficult. I know that the wildernesses that we're in, no matter what makes up that wilderness, is hard and it's made things really difficult in our lives. This pandemic has made things hard. The fact that we can't be in church together during this season of Advent and Christmas is hard. I understand that. I feel it too. It doesn't feel right to me either. But we have to make the best of it. God is still coming. Company is still coming. We have to prepare the way. We have to take initiatives to do it. We have to. With, whether that means helping those who are in need, the poor, the hungry. Whether that means we go out and talk to those around us, safely, of course, far apart, wearing masks. Whether that means that we give to those companies and charities that are in need. That's not just the church, but the other organizations that exist. Friends, we have to take initiative. John the Baptist, he showed us, he did, and he prophesied that the one who is coming will be better than he, and that he is nothing compared to the one coming. We are only instruments of God in this world. We are not God and we are nothing like God. But we try to be like God. 
We try to strive to align ourselves with God. But in order to do that, friends, we must continue to work because we have to work. It is in working that we grow closer. It is in working that we are transformed. It is in working that we can see God coming. We can see him coming. I hope and pray that this week that you can remain faithful during this Advent season. I hope that you can be obedient during this Advent season. Remember that this time of year is a time to be selfless, not selfish. Put others before yourself. Put God above yourself. Don't let yourself be abused. Don't let yourself be neglected, but put others before you because tis the season to do that because we have to make way in our hearts, in our communities, in the world for the advent of Jesus Christ. difficult time, friends, I want to remind you of something very important. You don't have to be in this building in order to be the church. You don't have to be in this building to worship and praise God. You don't have to be in this building to do any of that. You don't have to be in this building to pray. No, all you have to do is be willing and open to God to do that. Friends, we can be the church in this world, in this community. And while we can't meet here, we can still make a difference in this world. We can still show the love of God. We can be faithful people and we can be prepared for the company that is coming. I hope and pray that in all that you do, God will be with you and bless you and keep you. Serve the Lord always, friends. And give glory and thanks to God always and forever. Amen.